get underway. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to Salem, everyone. 39 days from November 1st. <laughs> Uh, thanks for being here. We want to take this opportunity to share some critical information about the October season. Uh, I'm pleased to be joined by the Chief of the Sound Police Department, Lucas Miller, Chief Alan Dion from the Sound Fire Department, and Abdullah Chajai from uh, C uh, the CEO of Keolis Community Services. Here in Salem, we want to make sure everyone has a safe and enjoyable haunted happenings. That goes for our residents, for our visitors, and for the people who work uh, downtown, for everybody. So it's important that visitors plan their trips thoughtfully. Think about how you're going to get here. On the average weekend day last year, Salem welcomed around 65,000 visitors. Some days over 100,000 people towards the end of the month. But we only have about 4,000 public parking spaces. New this year, we'll be conducting parking enforcement with automated license plate readers. So if you park illegally, including parking on a resident-only street, you're almost certainly going to get a ticket and possibly a tow as well. So don't risk it and ruin your visit. For the easiest, most enjoyable visit to Salem, come by train, come by ferry, come by bus, come by broom, but don't come by car if you can avoid it. Keolis will be providing additional train service during the month. You'll hear more about that in a moment. We'll be replacing our usual 150 passenger ferry, which runs to and from Long Wharf in Boston, with a larger vessel that can accommodate up to 600 passengers on October weekends. And a second ferry will be running between Salem and Hingham for our visitors coming from the South Shore. Planning your trip in advance also means getting tickets in advance for attractions and making dining reservations in advance whenever possible. Lastly, plan ahead by installing the Destination Salem app and the City of Salem's app called My Salem MA on your device and enable notifications. You'll get real-time updates when attractions sell out, when garages fill up, and when roads are closed. The full list of planned road closures which are scheduled has been announced earlier today and can be found at SalemMA.gov, but the police can and will close other roadways as necessary if the crowds are large and it's necessary to do so for public safety reasons. I'll close with this. Salem is not a theme park or a movie set, it's our home. We invite our visitors to help us keep Salem magical. Enjoy your visit, but be respectful. Don't litter or trespass on private property, even if you really want a selfie with that cool decoration on somebody's house. If you're on a walking tour, please don't block the sidewalks or the crosswalks. Be sure to pay attention to signs, road closures, and other notices from the city and from the police department. In the last few days of the month, the city issues triple fines for some violations, so please be cognizant. Above all, treat others with patience and kindness. It can be a very stressful time of year, year here in Salem. So that goes for the employees and the places you might visit, for other visitors to our community, and for the residents that you might encounter while you're here. Everything that makes Salem a great place to visit also makes it a great place to live. And we live here. Thank you and happy October. I'll welcome up Chief Miller now from the Salem Police Department. Hello. Uh, and welcome to Salem Police Headquarters. Uh, it really is good to have everybody here. We just renovated this room, so uh, uh, all the more reason why I'm happy to be here. Um, before I uh, go on, I want to point out uh, two of my uh, two of my uh, two people on whom I depend very much this time of year: uh, Robert Lubis, our Deputy Commander of Event Planning, and Lieutenant David Tucker, my uh, Traffic Division Commander. More about our traffic division in a minute. First, uh, I want to echo what the mayor said about taking public transportation. Salem simply does not have the capacity for all the people that want to drive here during our honored happening separate celebrations. Um, we do, however, have very good train service. And as you'll hear later, the train service is going to be expanded during our busiest times. Please, if you are planning to come to Salem, avail yourself of public transportation, particularly the trains. Um, I mentioned the problem with all of those cars coming to Salem. Uh, we simply don't have enough parking spaces for them, and our roadways become congested very, very quickly. To that end, we will have extra parking enforcement and extra traffic enforcement throughout the month of October. We depend on our neighbors, our partners in law enforcement, to do all of that enforcement, and we will have extra police officers from 
our neighboring departments, departments like Peabody, Beverly, Marblehead, and others are all very generous with their time during, a, during our busiest season. Um, also, NEMLEC, Northeastern Massachusetts Law Enforcement Council, we rely on for both extra officers and some specialty uh, uh, functions uh, such as uh, bicycles, uh, canines, uh, rapid, uh, rapid response teams. Also, Essex County uh, Sheriff's Department uh, is generous with their manpower. Uh, and finally, our partners in the Massachusetts State Police will be here doing enforcement as well. I also want to particularly point out a problem we had last year, which was drunk driving. One would think in a city like Salem, during Halloween celebrations with all the people on the street, it would be the last place you would take a drink and get behind the wheel of an automobile. But we found that that was not so, and that we had accidents caused by drunk drivers, uh, as well as simple uh, bad driving caused by drunk drivers. Um, so to combat that, we will have additional patrols specifically targeting uh, OUI uh, drunk driving laws. And finally, uh, to echo another thing the mayor said, we in Salem love Halloween. Clearly, we wouldn't be doing all the things we do if we didn't. But for a lot of residents in Salem, their lives go on. They take their kids to school, they go shopping, they go to the doctor, uh, and all of the visitors to Salem impede that. So, sincerely, I would like to ask visitors to Salem to simply be courteous of all of the residents in Salem who uh, maybe aren't celebrating Halloween on that specific day. Uh, but uh, that being said, we do welcome our visitors to this marvelous and historic city. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pangalon, thank you, Chief Miller, for hosting us here today. Uh, Keolis is pleased uh, to partner again with the city and the MBTA to offer again this year uh, expanded commuter rail services to Salem during the Halloween happenings. Uh, we will be offering more services to Salem every weekend in October. Taking the train is the safest and most reliable way to get to Salem and to, uh, to take advantage of these exciting events. So please, don't sit in the traffic. The ride from North Station to Salem is only 30 minutes. So passengers traveling to Salem can also take advantage of a special $5 round trip from Beverly, where basically uh, that will allow passengers to get uh, to use the uh, ample parking you have at Beverly and then take the ride to here in Salem in just five minutes. So rider, riders can also purchase the $10 a day pass for Halloween, which gives unlimited travel during the day of October 31st. Uh, we also encourage riders to use the $10 pass, $10 weekend pass, and that gives you again uh, unlimited travel during weekends, and that now includes the three-day holiday weekend. We expect this year to be as busy, just as busy as we were last year. So we encourage passengers to arrive early for boarding. We encourage them to plan ahead and to be safe. So uh, please stand behind the yellow lines. Please uh, follow the instruction of the train crew and the staff on the platform. And please never go to the track, track side, please. Uh, so I wanted to thank our crews that will make sure that everyone can get to Salem safely and reliably. Uh, and I would like to wish everybody and everyone a uh, safe and fun spooky season. Thank you. So we'll open it up if there are questions from anyone, uh, for myself, for the Chief, for Akiolis, for uh, Chief Diane, for Fire Department. Yes. Mayor, I had a quick question about, you said that you're, the police are using a new technology for parking. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that and why you think it's necessary? So uh, this year we changed uh, our October resident parking restrictions. We typically uh, have additional streets that get resident parking only restrictions added in the month of October. This year, uh, residents will be registering their vehicle on uh, on an app and the police will be able, and our parking enforcement will be able to utilize uh, license plate based system to check whether or not a vehicle is uh, registered pr properly for the residence restrictions zone and then automatically uh, be able to issue fines. This has been a problem in the past. Parking is always a challenge in October in Salem and what typically happens we see is that people 
who are looking for public parking and can't find it become frustrated. They park in a resident restricted zone um, and they will uh, often find that they get a ticket or a tow as a result. It's a bad experience for the visitor. It impedes the resident's ability to park in their neighborhoods. So uh, ideally, folks will take the train or take the ferry and find a different way to get here than having to risk that. Uh, but if they do want to make sure that our neighborhoods are, are protected and that residents have a place to be able to park in their home. Has, has Halloween and generally, um, to quote the chief, sep September, I think is what you said, um, has it gotten too big for Salem? I, you know, I don't know that I would say it's gotten too big. I think that it's gotten to be a significant event for us to manage. It's first and foremost, above everything else, it's a public safety operation for us. Um, it's an event where you know, we welcome a lot of people to our community. We celebrate our history. We celebrate the fun and the whimsy of the Halloween season. Um, from a management perspective, it's a lot for a city of 44,000 to be able to maintain. So we rely on our partners in the surrounding region to provide public safety assistance. We rely on our business communities to be partners in our activities as we prepare for uh, for the influx of visitors. We rely on the transportation partners at the state level and the regional level to be able to help move people to and from Salem. I think as a city on our own, we wouldn't be able to do it, but through these partnerships, you know, we're able to manage it and also see the benefits that it does generate for our local economy. To have a city of 44,000 people in eight square miles that has the incredible diversity of restaurants and attractions and stores that we as residents get to enjoy year round, largely thanks to our visitor economy, I, I think that's an incredible asset for us. Do you think residents feel that way? Uh, speaking as a resident, I can tell you it's extremely frustrating, um, but yeah, I think it's it's something that you, we learn to manage and we learn to kind of um, get better every year. You know, we start planning for October in November, and we'll have after action meetings, both public and internal, to talk about what worked, what didn't, digest um, any kind of changes that might need to be put in place for the coming year. Um, so we're constantly looking for ways to try to improve it, the experience for, uh, for the city, for residents, for our downtown employees and our workers. Uh, and also for visitors as well. I'm just going to keep going. Right? <laughs> yeah, Chief, if, if you, you talked a little bit about some of the help you get from neighboring departments. I mean, can you give people a sense of how much more help you do need and that you receive from places like the Sheriff's Network and, and other areas? Like, it, does the force double or something? You know? Sure. So, the plan that we have in the Salem Police Department for policing uh, audit happenings, uh, you know, beginning in September and, and, and extending through October, has been developed over a number of years and, and actually longer than, than my time in the Salem Police Department, uh, started before my time in the Salem Police Department. But each year we improve it a little bit on lessons learned from the, the, the previous, the previous uh, uh, season. Um, what we try to do is essentially create two police departments. One, to police downtown and all the activity that's going on that's associated with haunted, ha haunted happenings. And then maintaining our, our regular police operations so that, for instance, if you live in South Salem and you call the police, you still get prompt police service instead of it being held up by whatever's going on downtown. Mm -hmm. To that end, on our busiest days, we essentially double the size of the police department with all of the outside help we bring in, but also uh, you know, I'll bring in my own officers on overtime. So uh, uh, we have about 95 sworn police officers in Salem, and at our busiest times, we will have over 200 working in the city. Um, we call all hands on deck on on the on the busiest uh, those busiest days for our own officers. But of course, we also have to maintain enough officers to work. You know, the midnight shift and then the following day shift. So there's a lot of personnel management that go into it. Um, but as I said, on our busiest days, we're over 200 officers working in Salem. Do you have concerns? I know many, many years ago, there were some incidents of violence that happened. I know you also mentioned the drunk driving concerns. Yep. Do you have any concerns at all about, about just general safety um, on, on the evening of Halloween and leading up? Well, of course I do. And, and, and any time you have that many people packed into that smaller space, uh, there's a public safety component to managing. Um, simply managing the flow of pedestrian traffic can sometimes get challenging and we do have plans to close off streets to, to vehicle traffic as <coughs> those crowds swell to kind of have almost like a, a steam release valve when our when our pedestrian mall gets too busy we open up uh, the surrounding streets and when those streets do get too busy we open up the next uh, layer of streets uh, to pedestrian traffic close them to vehicular traffic and open them to pedestrian traffic 
Um, so uh, we're pretty confident in our ability to manage simple, you know, that many bodies in that much space. But of course, uh, we need to worry about, as you mentioned, violence, right? That many people getting together celebrating. Sometimes there's some friction there. Uh, and to that end, we do prohibit the carrying of weapons. All right, uh, people are very creative in their Halloween costumes, but we will confiscate for the evening uh, any dangerous weapons that we see. Um, we also, uh, you know, we use hard barriers to protect uh, those pedestrians against uh, vehicles either simply out of control or uh, intentionally being used as a weapon. Uh, we go, you know, if you look at the map of Salem, uh, we work with our Department of Public Works to use those hard Jersey barriers to really create a, a, a mostly impenetrable barrier for when those crowds get really big. Um, that being said, you know, a car can be a deadly weapon anywhere in the city. Um, and uh, you know, coming back to what I mentioned about drunk driving, right, drunk driving presents a danger you know, statewide, nationwide, um, but it, particularly as people celebrate, becomes that much more of a danger. Uh, have you oh, sure. added more uh, barriers since last year? Because I know specifically uh, last Halloween there were some cars that struck uh, pedestrians. We do. We, we, so we're, we're basically constantly adding barriers. Barriers do have sort of a lifespan, if you will. As we move them around the city, they wear out. Um, so we are constantly up, uh, upgrading our source of barriers, and we also borrow barriers uh, from NARAC. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again. Thanks.